Hello? Yep. Yep. Well, fancy this year we are. Microphone, eh? <laughs> Getting ambitions, I think. My wife must have changed. Changed my pages around to try and catch me out, eh? <laughs> right, um, if any of you know me, you know I can't do anything straight off the off the cuff. It's got to come per piece of paper, so I apologise for that just now. Um, hello, everyone, hello. and hello. thanks for coming. Anyone who was here last year, I'm sure, has looked forward to coming here again to pay respect to Scotland's most famous hero. Anyone who's here for the first time, that fills us with pride and we'd like to say welcome. Today, as I'm sure you, most of you know, is the 714th anniversary of the brutal murder of William Wallace on the 23rd of August, 1305. One of the very few facts documented about William Wallace, for instance, we don't know exactly when Wallace was born, or for that matter, where he, where he was, when he was born, or where he was born, because there is no such documented, documented evidence to support any such claims. We, of course, prefer the location we will all visit tomorrow at Eldersley place the Society of William Wallace is based and the place where the monument is. We can say that Wallace was approximately 35 years old when he died. He achieved a lot on those, in those 35 years, most famously along with Andrew de Murray defeating the English army at Stirling Bridge, not far from here. And if you were lucky enough to visit here at a time when the hedge behind us was trimmed, you'll see the marker stone, which is here, points firmly towards Abbey Craig, where Wallace and the Murray set up their encampment and surveyed the battlefield. I'm just going to say it's great being the first speaker because all these people are all now going to struggle to cover all this, but anyway, I've been there, I've been there, I've, I've, I've stood at Loudon Hill and watched speakers, heard them say what I'm just about to say. Anyway, after Stirling Bridge, it was all pretty well downhill, although Wallace never gave up, only to be betrayed by a fellow Scot, a Scottish noble, and he was transported to London where he was viciously and mercilessly murdered in the most brutal way imaginable. Hung, drawn and quartered, with his head put on a spike on the then London Bridge. Which is another documented fact about Wallace. So why are we here? We're here because after Wallace's murder and his body parts were scattered to Newcastle, Berwick, Stirling, Perth, the monks of this abbey re rescued what we believe was his left arm and buried it secretly in this place, marked beneath these two stones. Not a documented fact, but the story of Wallace's arm being rescued by the monks and buried here was, was passed down through the ages. And we know it to be true. This and so much other stuff about Wallace not written down doesn't make it any less true. And to be here with you all paying our collective respects is about a sincere an expression of gratitude to him, not only for his life, but the way in which he died. The place was always a place people came to privately. It was about four years ago we got together to create this commemoration. I'm pretty sure there are people who continue to come privately and massive respect to them for that. This year Historic Scotland got wind, wind of this gathering and we have been having and we have been having and I initially thought it might have been out to scupper us. I don't think that was the case though. Their interest was their interest was given us a little bit more work has given us a little bit more, more work. But ultimately, they seem happy not to intervene. So, it's with this good news, I would like to ask Gordon to sing a suitably patriotic song in a special place on this important day. Gordon. A 
this is a, a wee song about probably the reason why we're all here today to show our respect for a man that we all love, William Wallace. And this is what Wallace started and what I grew into today. This is a song called The Wallace Tree. While cowards hid and traitors turned, unloyal men were hanged and burned. So William Wallace showed the way to keep the oppressor foe at bay. To follow this man of holy birth, the noble lords would no set forth. So the people rallied to his name and cast that ragman roll to shame. And pray his seeds of liberty or sprang up Scotland's Wallace tree. And in that tree our nation grows, living strong and free. Upon the curse a stolen falls, the shadow of its castle was, where on the braggart William stood, and damned that persecution flood. But Tyrant Edward paid his spies with gold to buy a traitor's lies. The price of liberty is high, we a cry of freedom, Wallace died. And for his seeds of liberty, there sprang up Scotland's Wallace tree. And in that tree our nation grows, living strong and free. He showed the way, Bruce followed fast, and made all Scotland free at last. Till again our nation had been sold by the yellow curse of Judas gold. That terror rising to the skies reminds us all that freedom's prize. There's a right for you and a right for me, forever Scotland shall be free. And for his seeds of liberty, there sprang up Scotland's Wallace tree. And in that tree our nation grows, living strong and free. And for his seeds of liberty, there sprang up Scotland's Wallace tree. And in that tree our nation grows, living strong and free. Thanks, thanks very much, Gordon. Um, I'm going to invite uh, Patrick Kerman up uh, to speak now. Uh, pa Patrick is a pretty amazing guy. He, he's genuinely one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. Uh, he's um, from Chief of Switzerland. Usually brings chocolate with him. I hope you brought chocolate with you. Yeah. Uh, um, and I would say he's probably one of the as firm a Wallace patriot as you'll meet in your life. Uh, so, Patrick, would you like to come up and say a few words? Hello, Red. This day, a year ago, I stood before you and you, the Society of William Wallace, made me a member. Today, I can say, full of pride, that I have found new friends and not almost a second family. I am allowed to wear the tartan of the society as well as that of the Wallace family. Who should I thank for all of this? William Wallace. 
If William Wallace had not been, we would not be standing here today. We would not have stood here last year. I would not have got to know, know any new friends like you. There would never have been a society. You probably would not know each other. It is nice when we meet each other every year, but it's also sad. We are standing here, according to history, at William Wallace's grave. Let us never forget and always think about what he did for your homeland. He loved his homeland, his fatherland, more than he loved his own life. I was in London this year, visited Westminster, the place where he was sentenced, also Smithfield, where his life ensured a brutal end. I commemorated William at the Great Wall and sent a photograph to Gary. Gary wrote back to me immediately and informed me that the society mounted a plaque at the church on the occasion of the 700th anniversary and held a church service afterwards. While I was looking for the plaque, I was suddenly struck by a flash of ghost pimples. I could feel that something terrible had happened there, indescribable distress. After I found the plug, I went into the church and lit a candle for William and said a prayer. I would like to ask you all here at William's grave to think about William and pray with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Incredible. Well done, sir. I really do think that's amazing what you just did. If Patrick first came here, he couldn't speak. I wouldn't say any English, but he certainly couldn't speak Scottish. He didn't understand much Scottish, I'm pretty sure. But uh, I think that's, that's an amazing thing you've just done there. Thank you very much. Next speaker is uh, our convener, so I'll take the mic out to stand for him, as he likes to have a wee wonder. <laughs> I actually feel really bad here because I'm, I'm just dressed like this, but if I'd get dressed up, I'd, I'd have been late, I'd have probably turned up about 8 o'clock at night by the time I finished work, so we've got Patrick looking amazing, and I'm like this, it's not great. From Patrick's point of view, we watch that all the time, um, and what he's saying there from William Wallace's point of view, we'd never have met each other, you're from Liechtenstein, I might have met with Wayne Scotland played there in fairness, but we'd never got to know yourself, your lovely family. And you're right, it's down to William Wallace, and I think from the Scottish people's point of view, and, and the people that are here now, and the people that I've met throughout my life, it's basically William Wallace is why we've all met. And I, I, I was driving in the car today, and I was obviously coming today, and just thinking, of Wallace and I know obviously with life that things don't work out but if he could be looking down or if he was here now and looking at the amount of people here looking at Wallace Day t tomorrow looking at the amount of love and respect that the Scottish people have for him because when he was murdered in London on this day in 1305 he, I was trying to think how he would have felt did he, obviously he knew what what was going to happen, he knew it was always going to be brutal, but he obviously, from his country's point of view, must have felt he'd been a failure, because he hadn't achieved, obviously, what he fought his life for. And I think it would be great for him to be able to look down now and understand that what he achieved 
He was never a failure in the Scottish people's eyes. And I'm still a great believer today, if it wasn't for William Wallace, we wouldn't have a Scotland. Would Robert the Bruce have done what he did? Maybe not. You'll never know that. But for me, without Wallace, we would be Northern Britain. We wouldn't have a country. We wouldn't be where we are now. We wouldn't have the pride that Scotland's got. And I'm funny, I, I did say this at Leighton Hill as well, and I, I'll say it again. It's, 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 I've lived in London for seven years. I've been all around the world watching Scotland. And I always thought maybe it was just us being Scottish. But if I watch a game of tiddlywinks, I want Scottish guy to win. Do you, I, mean, I don't care. Do you know anything about tiddlywinks? No, but I want him to win. If you watch Britain's Get Talent, and I don't know if people can remember this, you've got the McDonald brothers. Now, they were rubbish. I mean, let's come down to facts. They were absolute garbage. But they were Scottish. And they get through about seven, eight, nine episodes, because we're all voting for them, because they're Scottish, it's what we do, it's something that we've got that you're Scottish. And I always thought it was just us, and it is. You know, we're off a nut. You know, it's, I think it's this sort of Celtic sort of passion that you've got that you could never ever get with anybody else. And I think with Wallace as well, when, when you look at what he does, and I think what makes him so special in the eyes of the Scottish people, and we can relate to him a lot more than sort of maybe Ro Robert the Bruce or, or sort of Bonnie Prince Charlie or any clan chiefs, because that's who you fought for. If the king said fight, you went how high? The clan chief said fight, you're going right how high? William Wallace was like us. He was one of us. So for somebody like him to get a whole nation, which was never ever known about, to get somebody like a normal person to get a country to fight and uprise against the intruders of Scotland at that point. It's never been known. And I think that's what makes him so special because he's just, he's like us. It's like one of us going out and sort of doing that. And I think we can relate to that a lot more and obviously gaining more respect because to do that, you must have had personality, to get people involved, not just the fact you're a big guy, not just the fact you're a cracking fighter, because he obviously was, but he must have had a passion, he must have had something about him, probably a bit like Davy Ross, if people have ever heard heard, uh, heard, that, heard, heard uh, Davy Ross speaking, you'd have fought to Davy. If Davy was speaking, you'd fight to him. I mean, we had um, uh, a thing we did, and we had about 40 people going, and Davy was doing a tour, and we went into Cambeth Kenneth Abbey, and there was a couple of boys there that I knew, and they were quite loud when they were in the pub, and when they'd heard about the thing, they said to me, I want to go in that, and I'm going, oh, this is going to be a nightmare, because they'll just murder these guys, just loud, and want to be as loud as, as, as each other, and be, and they, were, they, were just, they were just a nightmare. And they went on the tour, and, and Davy stood up in the bus and started talking, and they never said a word. They never said a word throughout the whole going here. And they said to me, is when they were in Cambeth Kenneth, which is just four walls, and Davy was talking, and he turned around and said, I was expecting Robert the Bruce and William Wallace to walk in at any minute. And Davy had that, that he could get people going and brought things to life. And Wallace must have been like that to get people to actually go and fight for their, their country and go, well, sod this, this is not good, let's go and do this. And I think when people look at their at their own lives and things that have changed with Patrick herself. You were met through through William Wallace. We now know each other. A class has been a very good friend. WhatsApp is absolutely fantastic for things things like this. And you look at things that have changed in your life. Now William Wallace we should never ever have heard about. He'd have been a monk. And obviously th things that's changed in his life with Alexander dying and you think if he hadn't died we wouldn't be here. Wallace we'd never have known about and just with, with sets of circumstances that went in his life at that time, we then got to the start that we are now here sitting, paying our respects to a guy that without, we would just generally would not have a country. I, I love the guy. I find it really, really frustrating at times because it's very difficult to prove a lot about him, um, which does make it more, more difficult. 
And I think I'll finish off with a thing when when we did the the, the plaque down in London for Baby's Walk, and the English Heritage guy that we spoke to um, could not have been the guy could not have been nicer. We were in a conference call. So I'd like to say I'd like to say that conference call. <laughs> Quite proud of that part of the call. Anyway, no, I know, I know. Um, so we're on a conference call uh, with Zoe from the church. Um, which we were very fortunate about because she was there when David did the work, so she knew exactly why we were trying to do what we were trying to do, so that made life a lot, a lot easier. And the English Heritage guy was on the other end of the phone, and we basically wanted to put the plaque on the right-hand side, and he was saying, you can't put it there. Put it on the left-hand side, and then Zoe's jumped in and said, well, we don't own that, whereas we own the right-hand side, so it makes it easier okay. for us. He went, don't worry about it. So we got off the conference call, and... I, I phoned Zoe straight back and I said, was that a read between the lines lack there that I've got there? And she went, I think it was. And we got an email back a week later and went, plan permission is sorted out for you. That's all done. Put it up there. No problems at all. And the thing is, he then said, send, send, uh, send through what you want to put on it. Send through the picture. Gordon did the writing uh, for it. Uh, he came back and went, right, and I've got no problems at all. Picture, which was Andy Hillhouse's picture, uh, who I really miss as well. And he said, you need to phone me. So I was like, all right, this is going to be good. So I phoned him up, and he said, I'm a bit concerned about the picture, Gary. I said, hey, what's wrong with you? He said, it's a bit gruesome. <laughs> and whatever. And I said, well, I don't want to sound bad here, but I said, but I can't change the course of history. That's actually what, what you did. And he just burst out laughing. I mean, aye, that's probably shy. Aye, 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 you're right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, OK, right, OK, I'm happy with that. Go for, go for that. So I then said to him, I said, well, <coughs> um, obviously, I, I'm in Glasgow. Plaques all sorted. Plan permission sorted. We need somebody to put it up. Do you know anybody down there? He said, that's, don't worry about that. That's sorted as well, Gary. Send it to Joe Blogs. He'll put it up for you. It'll be there on the day. No problems at all. So we turned up, and I ended up speaking to the guy that owned the building that we'd put the plaque on. And the English Heritage guy had passed, had passed sorry, uh, planning permission for him. I think the penthouse was £17 million, I think. I think this, the cheapest flat was like two, two million quid or something. And what he said to me was the English Heritage guy, he basically said, you put the plaque up, it's getting put there, there's nothing you can do do about it, just just do it. And the guy done it without any problems at all. Now sometimes when you look at that, and I get annoyed at times where you read things in the press and you know, you're Wallace, you're anti-English, or you're and whatever, you're anti-English. And what, worry, or what annoys me most about that is anything that we've ever been involved in with the English, they've never had a problem. They've been absolutely fantastic. They could have been nicer. Whereas you look at the Bell of the Bray that we've built in Glasgow, that took us seven years because Glasgow District Council didn't want it because it's too Scottish. <laughs> and that's the thing which gets me, is it's not the English that we've got a problem with. It's probably the people in this country here who actually hate this particular country. And they hate this part of you're this, you're that, you're whatever. Now, for me, Wallace is what Scotland's about. You've then got Robert the Bruce as well. You've got the two films that are out there as well, which I think are fantastic. And it gets the knowledge. I mean, you look at Braefer. I spoke to a girl today that's a sold a SIM card to. In fairness, she did say to me she was Austrian. And in fairness, she did say to me, you don't really need to sell me anything. Just keep talking. I love your accent. This is great, this. And I said about, about Patrick coming over. And she said, ah, Wallace Braveheart. I spoke to another person today who was from Germany. I had a really, I had a really, I had a really weird day, to, day today. And his birthday was today. And I went, happy birthday to you, pal. And he went, oh, thank, thank, thanks very much. And I went, do you know who your, your birthday's with? This is William Wallace. And he went, William Wallace. Braveheart, you watch Braveheart? He went, I watch Braveheart. Well, William Wallace died on this day that you were born. And the guy really burst out green. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So for the film as well, and everybody slags films off and whatever else, but without the films that we've got, it gets people out 
reading about Wallace and reading the true story about Wallace, the true story about Bruce, and I think that's all fair and good for us for moving forward. I just love this place. Um, I, I generally do. Um, I think from Wallace's point of view, you talk about the monks doing what they did, which must have been pretty dodgy, because if the English had found out what he'd actually done, you know, that, that would have helped them. The, the good thing about the time, uh, in Wallace's time and Bruce's time as well, is the church was very much on, on Scotland's side. And I think to, to bring this down, that we've got something that is a connection to Wallace. You've got the Wallace sword. People might say X, Y, Z, whether it's right or wrong or, or whatever else. We've got the Wallace letter back as well. You've got the Lebec letter as well. But we don't have that much to do with William Wallace. Uh, which is about, and I think that's why this this place is so important to us. I'm sorry for boring you. Thank God I'm not making a speech. So there's people going, there's people going to the office in the morning going, thank God Gary's not doing a speech. We're going to finish about 10 o'clock. So thank you very much for every single person coming today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, it's great to see so many people here. I would like to say thank you very much to George Kemper for getting this going again. Um, for the last four, four years. So a big round of applause for George, please. <laughs> and one last thing, how many people or countries can turn around and say we've got people who fly over with a family for Liechtenstein to come to a commemoration on their greatest hero? And from Sandy's point of view, she was probably gutted she's coming over here because last year she was freezing. Us Scots were going, this is actually quite nice, it's not raining, it's not snowing, this is great. Sunny's gone, I was in Jabal last week, it was 95 degrees, I'm sitting here and freezing my weather off. So fortunately the weather's a little bit better for you Sandy. Um, so thank you very much, Abu Ghabi, enjoy the rest of your night, thanks very much. Abu Ghabi. Oh, Actually, I think the battery's starting to get a bit flat anyway. Um, that's going to be. That's going to be. Right, um, I'm going to ask Jamie Blackhall to come up now. Jamie's a, a guy, I mean, uh, through a thing called the Freedom Convoys. Uh, uh, he, he's, he's, he, he does some amazing things. He, 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 I would call him the most public sort of what's the art, I mean, the, the actual thing that he does uh, with the declaration of, is it declaration of book you, you, you do, I've yeah. yeah. done before, you've yeah. done that, right, uh, yeah. it's pretty amazing, and uh, massive admiration to everybody that can, can do stuff like that, uh, I struggle, I mean, I'm, I'm a nervous wreck, so thanks very much, Jimmy, thanks. <coughs> First of all, thanks to George for inviting me along this evening. Also, thanks to George and the other speakers for taking care of the page. <laughs> <laughs> I'll know enough to show you them next year if I'm back. You're okay. But, uh, yeah. good. as we said, Wallace, he achieved quite a lot oh, in a short space of time. Oh, good. So, spring 1297, he saw the rise of William Wallace in September that year, the Battle of Stirling Bridge. And then July the following year, the Battle of Falter. And then a few short years after that, to this day in 1305, when he was in England. In eight years in history, he's done so much and he's remembered to this day and he always will. And when I was looking for something to say tonight, I came across another few guys who were brutally yeah. treated as well. And 515 years after Wallace, beheaded, John Baird, Andrew, Handry, ha Andrew Hardy and James Wilson. 515 years later, two weeks from the night in 1820, were also beheaded. What has changed? So anyway, back to Wallace. And credit to the pen for these words, Mr John Patterson. It's a poem he wrote. First Battle of Falter, the 22nd of July, 1298, under the command of William Wallace. It's called Falkirk Remembers. On Falkirk's lonely battlefield, Scott Patriots did stand, when thought alone was in their minds to defend their precious land. Their cause was just and noble, 
Liberty for all, to beat the proud usurper or together we will fall. I brought you to the ring, he cried, now dance the best you can, and dance they did, all those brave men, heroes to a man. Their bravery was not enough, and their lives outnumbered so, but those whom some relied upon from the battlefield did go. Each man died a hero, though this fight they never won. For all who died that bloody day, thank you, Scotland's sons. <coughs> From a poem to a response. William Wallace, in response to a charge of treason. I cannot be a traitor, for I owe him no allegiance. He is not my sovereign, he never received my homage. And whilst life is in this persecuted body, he shall never receive it. To the other points whereof I am accused, I freely confess them all. As governor of my country, I have been an enemy to its enemies. I have slain the English. I have mortally opposed the English king. I have stormed and taken the towns and castles which he unjustly claimed as his own. If I or my soldiers have plundered or done injury to the houses or ministers of religion, I repent me of my sin. But it is not on Edward of England I shall ask pardon. Thank you. This is a bit over. I mean, what a long we do now. Uh, I was going to do a wee thing. Uh, I'll tell you about it because I was quite, I was quite moved by it. It actually happened today in Aberdeen. They, they do a, there's a magnificent uh, statue up in Aberdeen uh, of, of William Wallace. It's, it's about, it's the nicest one I think that exists uh, uh, as, as a full, a full size image of the man. Uh, and um, they, had, they held a commemoration here today. I caught it during my lunchtime and I, I was impressed to see how many people were there uh, at lunchtime in Aberdeen uh, on a Friday afternoon uh, and, and there was a gentleman made a speech and, and, I, and I was going to play it on my phone but I think it would just it could be too technical now because I think this is about to die I really do get the feel this is about to die so I won't do it uh, but I, I, I'm, going to, so I'm going to share it on my, on my, my Facebook page and I would like you all to have a wee, a wee watch uh, uh, what actually happened up in Aberdeen today because it was it was fantastic. Uh, I never knew such a thing happened, uh, so uh, it was good to, to watch it. Uh, so what I know of you now is ask anybody who wants to come up and say a few words to, uh, to come up now. Uh, I know I know Lisa's. Where are you, Lisa? Yeah, Lisa's going to say a few words on behalf of her. I know. Fiance, is it the fiance now? Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I'm going to tell you a wee bit about Lisa. Lisa's from, well, I'll just say London. Uh, I don't know what part of London. But she used to look after the, the, the Wallace uh, uh, monument, uh, the, the, the plaque. Keep it tidy, take flags up. Uh, just generally spread the word. Uh, and she's moved up to Scotland now and she's found herself on uh, a, nice, a nice new future uh, Scottish husband. So, well done to her. <laughs> Okay, this is this is a short one. So, <laughs> right, last night I lay lay I lay I lay on the sofa thinking of Wallace, how he. Mu oh, hang on a minute. How how he must have more than likely been in chains, cold, alone, hundreds of miles away from his much loved home, his family, his friends. What must have been on his mind that night? His family, his friends, his men that he that had helped him to fight the battles to free Scotland. What would happen to Scotland? His wife, his wife waiting for him on the other side. To me, Wallace is not just a man from history, but a man that was a true patriot to his country. A man that stood up for what he believed in, for what all of us here today believe in, a free and independent Scotland. This was written by
for my partner. Hi to you, hi to you all, my fellow Scots. I'd like to say a few words what Wallace meant to me. Wallace, you will be in my heart and always will be forever in me. Until my last breath on earth, you will be never forgotten for hundreds of years to come. Without you, our beloved Scotland would not be here today. Thank you for being Scottish. You saved Scotland for all time. Thank you so much for everything, big man. Alba Gabrath. Come up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the best place in the world. To, to oh, thank you. I wouldn't pay. I would recommend it. Oh, okay. There you go. See, I'm very small, so I have to put the mic in. Is that mm -hmm. okay, William? what William Wallace means to me. He is my hero, obviously. Um, I think William Wallace is the flame that lights a candle in every Scot's heart. And I think that every Scot, every true sovereign Scot, should live by a well. He led by example. We should follow him and be true to Scotland. An independent Scotland, so that's, that's really what we need. So are Alba. And Alba Gubra, as I say, I wrote a song called Alba Gubra, but it's, uh, I've not got my guitar with me, so I'm not going to sing it, unless you want to really hear it. Uh, yeah. Alright, okay. Yeah. <coughs> I'll pretend I'm playing the guitar. By the way, the rose doesn't have any wee leaves in it. My six-year-old granddaughter showed me William Wallace doesn't like leaves on his roses. <laughs> she plucked them all off. Anyway, here goes. <clears throat> In a moment of time and space, I'll be Gubra. I feel your warm embrace. I'll be Gubra. And your waters flow through my veins. I share your joys, I share your pains. And the golden dream still remains. I'll be Gubra. My heart cries out to you. Alba my tears are your morning dew. Alba Gubra, and like a child, you take me by the hand. You open my eyes, you make me understand why your castles have crumbled in the sun. Alba Gubra, and now your time has come. Alba Gubra. A golden dawn now greets the sun, Alba Gubra. And a dream is a dream no more. Your land will be free from shore to shore, right to her very core, Alba Gubra. Alba is a Misha, Alba is a Misha, Dunian, Nanshi Gubra, Kosanish. Alba Mukhri, Alba Hamohi, Alba Gubra. Alba Gubra. Please step forward. 
There is a last verse here, it's just the same as the first verse, and it's a dream is a dream no more. Anybody else go that one? For lad this way from short to short, but I'm just waiting for anybody else go that one. Independence Day for that one. I wrote that for the last referendum, but it never happened. That was the dress rehearsal. That will happen the next time. That will happen the next time. Independence. Oh, aye, yeah. definitely, what, definitely. I'll get the other one from Lex. Oh, I'll get the other really one from Lex. Because Littlin could have, really well, Littlin would have been here, wouldn't she? Yeah. Oh, I don't want to sing it when you're a bit. So that worked out rather well. You've done Vanna Bonheim. Brooks aren't very comfortable to stand. It's hard. It's hard. I don't know what I think I <laughs> oh. No, 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 I've got a prick on my finger. Oh, no, I was going to sit and I carefully as I could to take him to the past. Oh, oh well, these things happen, eh? <laughs> I saw you on other things on the photograph, but not a spoken. <laughs> I, I normally get referred to, oh, you're the one with the paintings, or you're the one that looks after the one yeah, yeah. track in London, aren't you? And I'm like, yeah, it's like, people never know, seem to know my name. <laughs> That's right, I've run remember names anyway. <laughs> and then when everybody does find out my name, it's like, I get all these Facebook requests. Aye. They just sort of appear. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Another one. Yeah, we met him. We met him um, Falkirk. Yeah, yeah. Well. I know. Lovely. And ever since I've we see him at Falkirk, he just seems to have oh, been pictures on Facebook. Aye, aye. Aye. Oh, he's a star. <laughs> yeah. Lovely. He's a lovely dog, eh? He is, aye. I think he'd trash our little flat, though. <laughs> he leans on you. See you soon, eh? You seen it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, look, when we were up at the church at Falkirk, he was actually sat on one of the benches. Aye. <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
there for this. So uh, everybody who spoke, it's been fantastic. I appreciate it very much. I'm sure you all do. Uh, what we're going to finish now is uh, with uh, Scott Swahey. Gordon is going to do Scott Swahey for us. Uh, uh, you've all got your home sheets. Well, maybe not all of you, but you can share them. <laughs> let's uh, let's make not just William Wallace proud, but let's make Robert Burns proud. Uh, who's a man that actually uh, playing the words. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Sing it loud, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, I must have sang this song about 100 times and I had a wee brain block at fault up there this year. <laughs> so hopefully I can redeem myself this time and get rid of the words in the right order. <laughs> <laughs> Scots were here when Wallace led, Scots were bruised up and bled. Welcome to your glory bread, what they pay to me. Now's the day and now's the hour, see the front of battle hour, see the post forever tower, chains are slavery. Faith and knave, God will count the colors great. As the days of be a slave, let them turn the flee. God of Scotland's king and law, freedom sought to stormy draw. Freedom stand the freedom for, let them fall. Sons and survive chains, we will trade our dear things, but they shall be free. May the brothers of the flow, talent for in every foe, liberties of every foe, let us do and be. Scots are here, we led. Scots and bruises of the names led. Welcome to your glory bed. Heart to bed, Ali. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's the same from where it takes things. Yeah. Uh, I think I missed it. 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 I think well, I've already made the arrangement with Osla. Can I do it? Do you mind? Yeah. Do you want to come down a minute? Okay. Yeah. Can you do the big wave on?